I go by the name of Tory Lanez, for those who don't know me. But you can also call me Argentina Fargo if you're trying to get funky. <laughs> Honestly, when I was raised, I was, I'm Canadian born, uh, was born in downtown Toronto, uh, but I was raised in America. So I was raised in different places because my dad, uh, he was a missionary, he's a preacher, and he moved us a lot of places. So I, I kind of grabbed from a lot of different cultures and stuff like that. So it wasn't necessarily just my city, but I think moving back to my city kind of brought all those things home, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. I mean, I feel like, you know, you go to different environments in your career and wherever you go, you know, you hope to connect with somebody from there who can show you the ropes of how that place is. It's like, and I feel like a lot of the cases, the best people who can give you the in and outs of a city are artists, you know what I'm saying, and people you connect with. So when you make music with them, you're not only making music with them, it's kind of like you're making music with their city, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they bring that swag of their own city, you know? I mean, it's my first album placement. I'm very, I'm very happy, uh, you know, God blessed me with a certain talent and blessed me with the opportunity, to, you know, to be on his album. Hopefully the next time I land on the album, it won't be something so explicit, you feel me? But uh, I think when we were in Atlanta, uh, it was crazy. They, It was like one day, it was like 3 o'clock, uh, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and I was in Florida. I was chilling with my girlfriend at the time, and... Uh, I get a call from my manager, and he's like, yo, 5 o'clock, you got a flight straight to Atlanta, Def Jam, they're going to put you in the W. I was like, hell yeah, nigga. Def yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I went out there, and uh, I went in the studio, laid a couple records down. Um, it's actually funny. I actually did. I did the beat for, I did Who Do You Love before I actually did Me and My Bitch. It was actually called Hit a Lick at one point, and... Um, we was feeling that shit, but I guess we switched that joint up. Um, and then we did Me and My Bitch, which was, it's crazy because the A&R Sycamore was there. And he was like, he was talking about the album and what it, what it had and what it was missing. He, just, he kept saying, the album is just missing that Me and My Bitch record, like, you know, from back in the days like that. It has the whole California story. It's just missing that record. And so I called it Me and My Bitch and just gave him exactly what he was missing, you know what I'm saying? And. Hopefully, uh, you know, people think it's, it's one of the best on the, on the table. I think it is. Uh, and Jimmy Kimmel, uh, did I say his name right? Jimmy Kimmel, right? Yeah. Jimmy Kimmel said it was one of the, one of the hottest records on the um, album, too. So shout out to him, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I'm an open guy, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm open to, to, to explore all kinds of music. It's not necessarily just hip-hop. You know, I want to open the doors to, you know, certain European DJs and stuff like that. And if I would start naming a whole bunch of people on the list, we just go on and on. There's just so many people to work with, you know? I just like good music. If your music is good, I'm, I'm, I'm down to collab. I'm always down to hear and explore and new sounds of music, you know? G, man, G. My first tour I ever really went on with anybody, like, as an opener was G and he he was he was still he was always big in my eyes because every time I seen him from the day I actually met him he was like selling out shows and stuff like that you feel me but he has those different type of fans like he has like loving like fans like you feel me like he has a real fan base and every time I seen him it's just always been love like you know what I'm saying he never ever hated on me or whatever you know what I'm saying it's never really been about anything or it's never been about me just you know, coming up or being on top, because even when I wasn't really shit, he was still fucking with me, you feel me? And so it's just like a vice versa thing, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I was in a position, you know, uh, if, 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 the, if the positions were different right now, it would be the same type of love, you feel me? And I'm going to always show him love. That's like my brother, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's a good guy, and, like, you don't meet people like that. You don't meet genuine people, like, and that's a real nigga, like, you feel me? Like, no matter what people try to say, you know, people got these different... uh descriptions about what a real nigga is like you know what i'm saying a real nigga i feel is somebody who got morals and somebody who you know is like a down nigga you know what i'm saying through a lot of shit fucks with you when you ain't shit and fucks with you when you are shit you know what i'm saying that's a real nigga and i that nigga in my eyes is a real nigga you know what i'm saying yo rocky my nigga man <laughs> man rocky my nigga we was in the fucking uh in the bus freestyling earlier in the morning he was he was taking me through mad samples and shit man that's one talented uh uh, dude, man, he he he's very musically inclined, and I think people people don't realize how much you know. what I'm saying he really knows music, like he knows some whole other music. Like he was pausing the home, he was blowing my mind. Like today, I was like, wow, like you know, what I'm saying like this guy knows so much different samples, so much different 
genres and music is crazy, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely fuck with him, him and his nigga Backwood Jones, man. I fuck with Backwood Jones. We be smoking backwards the whole tour. And uh, yeah, man, I fuck with them niggas, man. My shot town niggas, I fuck with them all the way. It started off like I went out there and I had like two shows. So I was like, you know, yeah, it's South by two shows. It's going to be easy. It's going to be cakey. After the first show, I I went back home to like seven more. I had like seven shows all week, mad interviews and stuff like that. And I think it was it was like one of the first times I really got to get into that rush of just doing stuff like back to back to back. I was tired as hell because I was still I'm still recording from my new project, my new EP is called Lost Cause. And so between that and juggling South by, it was like mad frustrating. But at the same time, like I took everything as a blessing and I soaked it all in. And I'm so happy that, you know, I did it. And, you know. Yeah, and there's going to be many more successful South by Southwest to come, you know? Listen, I couldn't do this without God. And, like, I know a lot of people say stuff like that, you know, they want to thank God and all this stuff. But seriously, I really wouldn't be in any of these positions, wouldn't be getting any looks. I probably wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be getting this interview right now if it wasn't for God and God putting me in the positions that uh, I'm in, you know what I'm saying? And I, I want to let all my fans know that, you know, uh, I'm a God-fearing man, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I really bring it home for at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, just know that, you know what I'm saying? And to all my upcoming uh, young artists out there that, you know, probably looking at this interview like, yo, this nigga's cool or this nigga's whatever the case is, just remember that I wouldn't be here unless it was for God, nigga. Keep your faith in God and that's all, you know? That's it. For sure, to the number one website that's been holding me down I go by the name of Tory Lanez. You can call me Argentina Fargo. But for the number one website that's been holding me down, Hot New Hip Hop, since since 2011 or 10, they were the first people that ever posted me and the only people I was sending my music to at one point. And they, they always supported. So shout out to Hot New Hip Hop, the best motherfucking website in the world, man. Yeah. <laughs> We got London on the track. I'm a Cody man. Girl, cut that ass. I'm a Cody man. Girl, cut that ass. Girl, bust it. Break your back. Pour a real nigga. Girl, bust it. I know you got the Bacon with Caskey web series uh, and even a, a fan page in your honor called Caskey's Kitchen. Yeah. Uh, but before you were cooking up rhymes, I understand you actually started out washing dishes at Tuscany's. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. You know about Tuscany's. It's like <laughs> I understand that you actually started off uh, rapping karaoke like into your uh, little sister's <laughs> tape recorder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a little bit. You know what I'm saying? When I was a real young guy. <laughs> When I was a real young guy, yeah, that was the easiest way to hear yourself. Right. To hear yourself back. <laughs>